Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm Zias Caravada from ZK Research, and I'm here at IBM Think 2025 in Boston. I'm with Sanji Sahu from uh, Ingram Micro. Sanji, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Glad to be here with you. Yeah, so you are uh, president of uh, the Global Platform uh, product Correct. there at Ingram, and uh, this is your first time on with me, right? So, Correct. Uh, just a quick intro on Ingram Micro and your role there. Right. Ingram Micro is one of the largest technology distribution companies in the world, but now we are becoming a platform company. So we connect about 1,500 technology, big technology brands and OEMs to about 160,000 or more resellers around the world, and we reach about 90% of the world's population. We do hardware, software, cloud, subscription services, everything. Yeah, I know you guys are massive, right? Now, Correct. Uh, everyone talks about platform today. Uh, in Ingram terms, what does that mean? And how have you adapted uh, the company model? When I think of Ingram Micro, very traditional in a distributor, but how have you adapted to that platform uh, approach? The most common perception is platform is a tool that you build for better efficiency. It's part of it, but that's not the only thing. How do you differentiate between building a platform to support the business versus becoming the platform business? We did not start building isolated marketplaces for hardware, cloud, subscriptions. We created a platform to connect the entire ecosystem to solve complex challenges, which means can you actually have a platform for every person or can you price every single SKU real time? Can you have hardware, software, cloud in every, every one single platform? Can you actually, you know, push recommendations using AI? Can you actually integrate to customers and vendors using frameworks where they are? And ultimately, you don't own anything in Ingram Micro. You connect the demand with the supply. Using data and AI and platform capabilities, can you make that connection better? That's what I call is a platform, you know, and, and where we are trying to be. All right, now, um, the, you know, we are thinking one of the big themes here, right, obviously AI. Uh, your platform helps you enable better AI, but where are customers today with AI? What, what are they thinking about? Obviously, everyone talks about it. It's hard to find a lot of use cases, though. Yeah, a lot of people talk about AI, and there are new, new algorithms of AI all the time. But a lot of the use cases of AI are primarily in chatbots or some prompts, yeah. you know. Very few companies yeah, are co partners. But I don't yeah, really call it AI, right? Yeah. But very few companies are actually driving meaningful value with AI. You know, the reason for that is there is no AI without data. So you know to figure out how your data and the common mistake companies make is they're trying to work on a fancy AI algorithm and try to find a business problem to solve it versus trying to understand your business problem and trying to find a solution with AI. And that's what I say is that you need to evaluate AI in three simple things. Speed, scale, and service. Okay. Does it help you to generate speed in your business? Does it help you to scale? and can it help you service customers better? And that's what we should look at it. And think big, act small, and really define those small use cases and iterate, iterate, iterate better. Okay, and what are some of those small use cases that you found customers want? Yeah, think about this. Most of the customers want efficiency. Like today, you're looking at billing. Can you reconcile your billing? Can you actually figure out how do you track your orders? You know, using AI. Can you actually do some of the basic solutioning and service using this? But most important, I'll give an example that what we are doing today in our platform. We have automated the tracking, but now our AI models are looking at multiple factors and proactively giving opportunities for our sales team to go and call our partners for opportunities that is beneficial for them much more speeder, much more faster in the market. That's another use of how AI is driving that. Or you sell a hardware, attach a warranty to yeah. it. So there are multiple ways you have to think about how you solve your problems. Or for example, on the supply chain side, we are looking at it, how you're doing better category management. So there are multiple ways you have to do AI. My two cents is understand your journeys, your customer journey, employee journey, your partner journey, and figure out where AI fits to make it better. Yeah, well I think uh, uh, that starting point of understanding your journey, not a lot of customers understand that. And also I'm glad you brought up the data point. When I talk to customers about what's holding them back from AI, even ahead of security, understanding what data they have is by far the top issue, and I think most companies really don't have a good handle on that. So, so there are two parts of the problem. One is 
less than 5% of the data is actually meaningful, right? And yeah. data loses value and we a lot in, of bad in 24 data hours. Yeah. yeah. The second part is that every company has a lot of systems. Do you rationalize systems or extract data? You just keep adding them. You keep adding <laughs> yeah. them, right? So you have to have about how do you actually rationalize your systems and then also harmonize data. So it's not one or other. You have to do a dual thing to do that. And extracting data in a meaningful way and put it in your infrastructure and architecture such a way you can actually look at it. And then really making AI mainstream. It's not just for reporting. How you bring that AI into transactional boundary to really drive value for it is very important. A lot of people think, oh, we are doing AI to generate reports. That's not the use case. Yeah, it's good. But how do you create the architecture to bring it such a way that you drive value out of it? Yeah, I think uh, reports has been kind of incremental value versus transformative value. Correct. And what you're talking about is the latter. Correct. Yeah, so. How do you actually improve your customer experience, your partner experience, how you actually running your business yeah. using AI. Yeah. That's very different yeah. than doing Th reports. That's how you get an, you know, an NPS score for a go from five to 50 versus five to seven. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, we are here at Think, and I want to talk about the IBM relationship. Long history between IBM and Ingram Micro. Talk about that partnership and, um, you know, where it's been, but really where it's gone to today, given this kind of hybrid cloud AI era we're in. Yeah, absolutely. I think we have a long relationship and we are growing, you know, steadily. We have a really great partners together. We work together. We are reviewing the relationship really going well. I think there is also an opportunity, right? One of the discussion I'm having today is if you look at, you know, IBM, the main focus is building the ecosystem, looking at the IBM Select or the, the SMB segment, drive automation efficiency, and then also partnering with some of the you know hyperscaler or cloud you know and, and hybrid cloud and, and yeah. gateways. Well, that's been a big change for IBM. Yeah. They weren't really hyperscaler friendly a few years ago, right? So Correct. now they are. Yeah. Yeah. It's more of a competition, yeah. not competition. So how we actually work together, and I think that's where what. I'm talking to IBM today is how we can partner better. Like the platform model that we have really fits well with IBM's goals, right? How we can actually take them to newer markets with the efficiencies of our platform. How do we can partner with you know, AWS or other gateways that we have actually worked on? How can we help connecting the ecosystem? So we are having a lot of great discussions today, the IBM leadership about how we can actually partner better. We are still a great partner doing together. Now so let's solve these challenges together so that that's what is the main focus on today. All right, and specifically to this thing, what are you looking forward to here? I'm looking forward to understand you know, what are the trends, what are what are the, our partners talking about, what are their pain points, and what is the themes emerging? You know, you, sometimes you're listening to people, listening to partners, you get a vibe of what is working, what is not working. So I'm, that's what I'm looking for. Obviously, I came here to connect with some of the IBM leadership, but also listening to our partners and getting a vibe of what's happening in the channel and take some, you know, inputs for us to be better and improve in what we can do better in the future. All right, and last question. So for the audience watching, our, obviously everyone interested in AI, right? Uh, IBM's a great partner of yours. Just a couple of pieces of advice on companies on how to get started. I think you should really define your use case in the business strategy, what you want to solve. You're assuming they know what their use case is. So, yeah. yeah, so find a use case and then look at the possibilities of one or two things with AI that can solve the use case. Do a small proof of concept and figure out does it actually help value and then scale and then iterate more. If you try to boil the ocean, then you, you will not be successful. Second is your chatbot or your POC is not only AI. You got to really figure out that we should not do AI for the sake of AI. It's better to do a small thing driving value versus doing a fancy POC that doesn't drive value. All right, so from Sanjeev Sahu, your chatbot is not AI. I'm glad you said that because a lot of people when I ask them what they're doing, they add some reason chat GPT. And to me, that's a little bit of value there, I guess, but, yeah. but not really the long-term transformative value. Absolutely. Right? So you define know. your use case, You've got to have the data. And focus on value, value and think big and act small and iterate more. Think big, act small, I like that. So. And, it, and you've got to be imperfectly perfect. AI is not perfect, yeah, but yeah. a little more perfect every day. All right, anything else you want to add? No, that's all. Thank you for having me here and I'm, you know, and I hope it was helpful. Yeah, so on behalf of Sanjeev Sahu from Ingram Micro, I'm Zias Karaval from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. Uh, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on the next episode of ZCast.